All right, everyone, lots gone on in the last few days. There's nothing more that I can add in terms of Omar Barada, I don't think. Um, in terms of his background, we've known a little bit more about him now. It looks like a really sound appointment. The two things that stood out for me were that it seems like it's an Ineos led appointment, which is really positive because it means their influence is perhaps greater than I thought it was. I thought the Glazers with relinquishing some of the power that they're relinquishing would would want a strong say on who the CEO is going to be because of course it's a club appointment rather than a football appointment and I thought they'd just get you know a financer, a banker, uh, a commercially driven person in whereas this is a an expert operator in, in football and commercial stuff and um, I think the fact that Ineos have had that uh, that, that influence is, is it, it gives us something to judge them on positively that I wasn't expecting. Uh, it's a bonus. Um, sorry, I've still got my seatbelt on. <laughs> um, it's a bonus because I was thinking, as I, as I still do, you know, I'm not judging Ineos too too her too harshly, too positively. I'm just waiting to see what they do. But I wasn't expecting this, so it's great to be able to say, yeah, that's a real positive that we um, that we can we can talk about related to them. Um, the other thing was the the statements that had been made by the club forward slash Ineos, I think, in, in relation to this appointment and without having it at hand because uh, it's at home. The, the statement was something akin to we're, we're putting football back at the heart of what we do and that word back never as a four-letter word had so much meaning. Um, it's, a, it's a real acknowledgement that um, it hasn't it hasn't been the, the forefront of what we've been doing and we as fans we know that but but we've been we've been um gaslit we've been told that the way that we feel is wrong essentially by the statements that have been put out by the club in the past things like you know, we're man united we can do what we want we we're a huge football club we're the biggest club in the world of course football's our priority etc etc we all know that's not true but um it's an insult to the intelligence of the fans and I think this is an acknowledgement that yeah we see you and you're right it's clever but it's also again a big indicator that the influence that Ineos have because Sheikh Jazim's team were in trouble with the Glazers for saying about a year ago we want to return United to their former glories because it implied that the Glazers were responsible for us not having success anymore um, and this statement is akin to that really and, and they're sharing the boardroom with them so i always said if the glazers just get out of the way and don't have anything to do with this then that'd be great and um, and these types of things make me wonder if that might be something that might happen and, and that's obviously a positive the other part of the statement of course said um they want the fans to be able to see the red flag flying high at the summit of english and, and european football as uh, Sir Matt Busby said, as, as it says in the statement, I, I'm being picky, but I think it wasn't it Jimmy Murphy who said that. But you know what? It's good enough that they've they've gone with the Busby thing. Um, again, and clever, um, connects to the fans, um, speaks to the history of the club, of course, and that'd all be. I'd be sceptical about that if, if, they're, if they're taking no action, if they were just saying that type of stuff but they weren't really doing anything. But obviously they've already made quite an impact with what would I think this appointment of, uh, of Barada. So it's positive stuff, but I'm cautiously optimistic. I think we show that the response of the fans over the weekend, some of the fans anyway, is indicative of the, you know, how far down the standards have gone at United that we're, we're so used to incompetence that Anything that's that's semi competent, we we start creaming over it like we've like we've won the league, and you know it's a good appointment. But it's that it's a good appointment. It's a common sense appointment. We haven't had any of that. It's very refreshing. But you know we're supposed to be one of the biggest clubs in the world, so doing something competent is something to be optimistic about. It's not something to celebrate, in my in my opinion. Um, and what needs to also happen now is that whether it's Paul Mitchell and and Dan Ashworth or it's other expert operators in their field we need a director of football and we need a sporting director and, and those appointments need to be made and then from there it's about how ruthless they are so we need to because if we get the sp uh, director of football and sporting director in place or, or just one of those really to be honest with you the infrastructure in terms of this that that um 
the, the team that we've got, the football board, if you like, is starting to look pretty decent. And because you've got Jean Claude Blanc there, um, I'm not really including Brailsford and, and, and Ratcliffe because their football expertise is, is non existent, but nonetheless, they look like they could be a positive influence on it. So you've got to kind of include them. You've obviously got, say, Jean Claude Blanc, you've got uh, Barada there now, and then if you get one or two more in there, that's a very strong unit off the pitch. Which we've, which would be so so different to what we've ever had before, but that needs to happen, and if that happens, then the next step is that you know then the proof's in the pudding. What are you going to do? What are you actually going to do? What are you going to bring to the table? Because there's a lot that needs to be removed from the club. It's revolution, not evolution. The the open heart surgery that Ra that Ralph Ranjik spoke about has has not even started. Um, and I'd like to see. I'd like to see this squad tipped upside down. I don't. I don't want two or three to go. I want seven or eight to go. And I think they need to be uh, looking at uh, the likes of the people I've mentioned before. I'm going to go over it and over it and over it. But, but Rashford's a big one for me. Um, I, if I look at the vision of what I want for United, I want players who get it. I want players who um, who want to be there, who want to try, who want to work hard, who want to run back, who put football at the he ahead of anything else, that um, that understand the history of the club. Um, that understand the honoured and privileged position they're in to wear a Manchester United shirt. We're not just another football club. The reason we are who we are and what we are is born out of the Busby Babes and um, people that died in an air crash nearly 66 years ago. In a couple of weeks' time, it'll be 66 years ago. Um, and, of course, it's a long time ago, but you know, I want that, that history um, to be... To, 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 when I go to Old Trafford, it seeps out of everything, and I think players have to absorb that and then use it. And you're privileged to play for Man United, and I dare I say it, it's not probably dissimilar to play for for some, you know, Liverpool. I hate to say it, as much as I hate them, they do have a history. Um, Barcelona, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, there's special clubs in the world, and we're right up there in terms of what we've got to look back on. And when I first started going to United in the eighties. The history of the babes just seeped out of the place. We've got another 30 years now of 20 of which, 25 of which were very, very good, good additions to that history. So when you play for United, you, you're walking on the same pitch that Eddie Coleman played on and that um, Roger Byrne and Tommy Taylor and Duncan Edwards and Sir Bobby Charlton and Bill Folks and um, Gordon Hill and Steve Coppel and Norman Whiteside and Brian Robson and... Steve Bruce and Gary Pallister and Dennis Irwin and Peter Michael and Roy Keane and uh, Ryan Giggs and you know Gary Neville, Paul Scholes, David Beckham, Reid van Nistelrooy. The list goes on and on and on. And you know they're big, they're big shoes to fill. But also it's an honour, it's a privilege to play on the same pitch as those players. And you've got to be able to carry that if you play for United. And what we've done over the last few years is rewarded players who not only are nowhere near being able to carry that kind of um, that, the weight of the shirt, but in some cases we've actively rewarded players who don't turn up to training on time, who don't run, who don't track back, who have a really poor attitude and who look like they don't want to play for Man United. That has to stop. Forget about catching Man City and all those types of things. I don't care about Man City. Man City are a piece of shit under our shoe. They can win the treble for the next five years. It doesn't mean anything. We have to get our own house in order and we have to aspire to be better than what we've been. And there's some basic standards that we need to put in place that if we do, we will be better than what we were. And if City have the proper sanctions against them, then maybe we might start competing at the very top part of the Premier League. But while they're allowed to do what they've been doing, it's going to be very difficult. But I'm not judging it on that. I'm judging it on what we what we do about ourselves as a football club. That's what we have to look to. And um, and, I ha and that's where it comes back to. They've got to be ruthless and they've got to take action. So this is a great step in the right direction, this appointment of Barada. Um, looking forward to seeing the influence that he can have. It's a very positive sign that Ineos have, have, have led this um, and a very positive appointment shows the, the weight of United is still there, hopefully, and might, I hope, indicate that um, Barad has got out there before the shit hits the fan for City. So it's all good. We need to keep moving in that direction. And as always, ultimately, Glazers out.